Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to Advent, a wonderful season of the church year that is rich in meaning. And yes, it is a time of of preparation for the celebration of Christmas, uh, but it's even more than that. Um, The themes that stand out in in uh, Advent are focused on the, the, the meaning of Advent. Advent means coming, coming. And so during this time, this season year, we focus on the, the fact that um, Christ came once as he was born in Bethlehem. True God, true man, to be the Savior of the world. Christ continues to come now. He comes to us By the Spirit, through the Word of God, He comes to us through the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper, as Christ is present with us now. And He will come again on the day of resurrection as King of kings and Lord of lords. So we celebrate the coming of Christ past, present, and and future. The colors have changed to blue. Blue is the symbol of hope. And hope for a Christian is not wishful um, thinking, wish, but is rather uh, focused on the certainty of the promises of God. The main decoration of the Advent season is the Advent wreath. And with the Advent wreath comes patient waiting. We don't light all the candles at once. We don't just rush into it. But rather each week we light another candle. The symbol there is patiently waiting. Just as the people of God patiently waited for thousands of years for the coming of the Savior Jesus Christ. Just as we are patiently waiting for Christ to come again. Advent is very um, countercultural. It goes so much against our, our culture, which is instant gratification. But the, 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 the Christmas that Advent prepares us for is about the message, the story of God's love for us. That God came down in the babe born in Bethlehem. God came into our world of sin in order to be our Savior. The Christmas of our culture is more about shopping and giving gifts and going to parties and overindulging and stuffing the calendar with all kinds of activities because there's so many things that have to be done and accomplished. And sadly, Jesus doesn't have much of a part of it and sometimes no part of it at at all. And so a number of years ago, well, over 10 years ago, there were a small group of congregations that started Advent Conspiracy. And we have participated and in, in emphasized Advent Conspiracy in the past, and it's been a few years, so doing that again. So what's this all about? Well, first should say what it isn't all about. Advent Conspiracy is not about getting mad at our culture, Okay. It's not about trying to change our culture, to go back to the way things used to be. And it's also not about feeling guilty about some of the things that we like that go on during this time of the year. You know? I like Christmas lights. I have thousands of them. Okay? I like cookies and all the Christmas sweets. Okay? And so it's not about feeling guilty because we participate in some of those things, but it, it's rather it's about taking a step back and taking a look at personally and within family are the way, the things that we're doing and, and what we're d- focusing in on, is that the best way to celebrate a God who loves us so much? that He came into our world and He gave Himself on the cross and He rose victoriously from the dead so that He may live and dwell in our hearts and our lives forever. Is this the best way to... Are we doing the best things and and the best focus of how to celebrate that? Or are all of those things sometimes being distractive 
and getting in the way of what Christmas is all about. So over the next four weeks, we're focusing in on four themes. Worship fully, spend less, give more, and love all. And today we focus on worship fully. In our reading from Isaiah chapter 2, we heard, let us go up to the house of God, to the mountain of the Lord. In the psalm that we read responsively, we heard, I will rejoice with those who said, let us go to the house of the Lord. And then in our gospel reading for today, in Matthew chapter 21, as Jesus entered into Jerusalem on, on the donkey, the people ran out to greet him, and they worshipped him, putting down palm branches and crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. And there are just so many places throughout Scripture that talks about worshiping the Lord. We were created for worship. We were created for worship. And, and as I speak about worship, I'm talking about worship in the broad sense. The narrow sense is, you know, coming together for the worship service. Um, but the broad sense is we were created to worship, to worship our God in all of life, that all of life is to be a, a, a worship of our Lord. Because everybody worships. Everybody. Every single person on this planet worships. And we have two options. We can either worship the Creator, or we can worship something He created. That's it. There's two options. We either worship the Creator or we worship something He created. Yeah. Because we live and we respond under the rule of something. And it's either God or it's something else. And if it's not God within the, 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 the rule of our hearts, then it's something else. It's an idol of some kind. And there are times when we push God out of our hearts and we invite something else in. And it can be any number of things. But the thing that we put in the center of our hearts most often is ourselves. Step aside, God, I'm in charge. I'm calling the shots here. I'm ruling things here. So we, we needed God to come down. We need a Savior. A Savior to, to protect us against the external idols and a Savior to rescue us over and over and over again from the idol of ourselves. Because you see, before worship becomes a human activity, it's first of all a, a human identity. Because everything we either we say or, or we do flows out of worship, is rooted in worship. And every choice and, and every decision we make comes out of what is ruling in our hearts. So, God says to us, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And when God is ruling in our hearts, then it's possible for us to do the second of the great commandments, love our neighbor as ourselves. What naturally flows out of that, when, when the Lord is ruling in our hearts, what naturally flows out of that is, is being loving and kind and generous and looking out for others. But when we push God out and we're at the center and the idol of self is in charge, then the things that we say and we do are impacted by that. It's when we say hurtful things to people we love. It's when we do hurtful things to the people we love. It's when we make choices and decisions 
that go contrary to how we know we should respond to what God has done for us. Because rather than worshiping the Lord, our, our worship is of something or someone else and often mostly ourselves. And, 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 and pushing God out. And so sometimes what can happen is, is during this time of the year with so much stuff going on and so many things and so many activities that those things can be in the center ruling our heart and influencing what we say and what we do and the decisions that we make and how we do the celebration rather than being influenced by the Lord. We need a Savior. We need a Savior. We needed God to come down. We needed God to come down to defeat the sin that causes us to allow all these other things to push God out of the center in our lives. We needed a Savior to come down and to, to reclaim us for what we were created to do, to worship, to worship the God who made us, who blesses us, who gives us all. And so part of worshiping fully is, first of all, is, is, is taking an account of ourselves and, and meditating and thinking about what is it that I allow to push God out? What are the things that are going on in my life? What are the things that I allow to push God out and those are ruling my life? And, and then to focus in on... on, on Repenting and, and claiming the forgiveness and the love of our Savior Jesus Christ as Christ seeks to reclaim us in, in worshiping Him and in loving Him and in growing in Him. You know, the whole focus of what's my identity and who am I and is it shaped by the Lord? And how is our identity shaped by the Lord? Well, do you remember Red Letter Challenge? It's shaped by being. Being. Being with the Lord. And as we are with the Lord, our, our, our identity is shaped by the Lord. So you might want to pull out your Red Letter Challenge book this week. If you've tucked it away, pull it out and take a look at days 6 through 13 about being. And in this being in the Lord, we grow in, in, in worship. And it talks in there, if you remember, about the spiritual disciplines. The spiritual disciplines of being in the Word. And there's opportunities that are available during this Advent season with Advent devotional booklets and lots of different things to help us in being in the Word. Being in prayer. Spending time with the Lord in prayer. Being um, in worship. Gathering together. We have extra opportunities for worship. And those will all be published on the Wednesday nights and then on um, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Opportunities to gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ as, as, we, as we worship the Lord. Because as we come together, as we're in the Word, as we're in prayer, as we're with worship, we make ourselves available to the Christ who comes to us now in the present. Making ourselves available to the Christ who comes to us in Word and sacrament to grow us in allowing Him to be in our hearts and to rule in our hearts. The other spiritual disciplines, the importance of, of resting and yes, celebrating. And even in the midst of this season of so much celebration and so much feasting, the spiritual discipline of fasting. Maybe there's something that's part of your Christmas, that's been part of your Christmas for a lot of years that maybe you go, hmm... Does this really draw me closer to Christ or does this get in the way? Maybe I need to fast from this this year. To seek to grow closer to, the, to Christ and His rule in our hearts because everybody worships and we're worshiping all the time because something is always ruling in our hearts. And again, there's two choices 
It's either God the Creator or something He created. And most often it's ourselves. And so we seek to worship fully by recognizing that by taking the opportunities that God gives us, by using the spiritual disciplines, by being with the Lord as He shapes our identity, as He rules in our hearts. And all of this is because of what the story is all about, what we're preparing to celebrate again. A God who loved us so much, He came down into the brokenness of our world He came down into the brokenness of our lives and He gave Himself for us that we may have life forever in His name. We pray. Good and gracious God, we thank You for this season of Advent and for the the time again to prepare and to recognize the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ has come and He does come to us now and will come again. Lord, help us to grow in worship. In worshiping You, allowing You to rule in our hearts and our lives. Lord, so often we push You out with so many different things and most of the time it's ourselves. Forgive us. Renew us. Strengthen us. Help us, Lord, to um, allow You to reclaim us. To take rule of our hearts and our lives. And bless us, we may grow in our preparation of giving thanks and praise to you as we celebrate the wonderful news of your love for us. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. And now we worship the Lord.